and everybody's looking forward to our next game. It's time for Hot Matchups, presented by Wingstop. And speaking of wings, the Buffalo Bills going at the Baltimore Ravens, who are a two-and-a-half-point favorite, uh, despite almost being 0-3 and and having one of the worst losses, uh, late collapses in recent regular season history, other than uh, theirs. Uh, I guess the Miami Dolphins a few years ago, 46 and a half points. It's going to be the Sunday night game with Tariko, Chris Collinsworth and Melissa Stark on the call. The Ravens got in the win column. They, they could easily be 0 and 3. Greg, they could easily be 3 and 0. How do you see them doing against Josh Allen? And I've got to take them to win in the end. Take who? I, I don't feel strong. The, the Ravens. No, the Ravens. They're the favorites. They're at home. This is not your normal one and two team. I think that number reflects what the underlying numbers would say about this Ravens team for in, in DVOA, this is the best team in the league, the bills versus the number five team in the league, the Ravens that the Ravens have been that good. Like I just mentioned, the Packers have the best running game in the league. Statistically they, they do, but the Ravens, I think I might take them in the, like if I just had to choose one, Lamar Jackson is running really well this year. He is second in the league in success rate. Derek Henry is breaking about as many tackles yeah. and yards after contact as anyone. So it's coming along. And I do think over the years, if you want to beat a Sean McDermott defense, you got to be able to overpower them and run the ball. Cause they, they're on their P's and Q's when you throw the ball against them and they're very sound. It's hard to get big plays, but you tend to be able to have some long drives. I do think Lamar and Derek Henry show up in this one. Yeah. I mean, they're going to have to, right? Because the Ravens defense, that front, when they were able just to pin them back last week against the Jags, I mean, you can't stop them. They, they made the Jags one dimensional early Monday night. And that was that if you make them start to, you know, work with that run game, as we're seeing Derrick Henry, I think he's averaging like six yards a carry. It's crazy. And they got him involved last week, right? They, they used him in the fourth quarter, something that they had not done mixing some Lamar and justice Hill. I think you can keep this Buffalo bills defense off balance. The one thing that worries me, and this is why I like Buffalo in this game, is you have seen the Ravens, especially in the second half of games, get mismatched with their linebackers against op- opposing receivers, whether it's tight end, running backs, and where the, are the Buffalo Bills where they make their money? Yep. With with Knox and with Kincaid. And we you seen with in, Cook and Ty Johnson in the past. Cook too, and, yeah. and you have seen in every game with the Ravens that have been close, you're seeing Roquan Smith chasing somebody in a mismatch. You're seeing a linebacker, Trenton Simpson, Simpson trace chase somebody in a mismatch. They've got to figure out how to work that because teams, you better believe that Joe Brady is up there looking at that because that's what you saw all game against Jacksonville. You saw them matching up against the inside linebackers against the Jags and having them chasing somebody, you better believe that's something that's coming the Ravens way. Yeah. Josh Allen has only missed three passes this entire season when targeting the slot. He's 23 or 26. Wow. That's 241 crazy. yards and four touchdowns. This is safety. Josh, this is the safe, not making mistakes version of Josh Allen that we've wanted to see for years. And the Jags could do absolutely nothing about it. I have real concerns about this, this Ravens defense. Uh, in, in dealing mm. uh, with that because of because of the issues that they've we, we saw the blown coverage against worthy uh, in the opener the the comeback uh, last week all of the difficulties with Devonte Adams and, and the Raiders I'm actually picking the bills uh, in this game uh, when, when I made the picks for G, uh, GDV uh, Hytham emails me back you're picking against Baltimore <laughs> and it's just I can't remember the last time if it's ever happened yeah I, th- I think once in the past couple seasons and th- that was just <laughs> It was a matchup then. It's it's kind of a matchup now. Uh, I don't know how much of the of the comeback on the offensive line was the offensive line getting better and Philly played a great game, or was that just the Dallas Cowboys? Uh, yeah, kind of it's a big time test. Capacity. Now I find out I, Ed Oliver is not overmatched. No, no, they that's been one of the stories of the season. How much they're getting out of Von Miller and Ed Oliver and Greg Rousseau, I think they're getting more than they because they blitz the least amount in the league, but they still can get enough pressure and what an advantage that is. I I don't think though the Buffalo defense, their linebackers, some of their cornerbacks, you know, after Christian Benford, who's he's playing lights out. He's a hell of a player, but I think the rest the other cornerbacks, because Teron Johnson is is probably out again and the safety position, Tamar Hamlin's playing great, but they've only played, you know, I know they played the Dolphins and they they did well against Tua there for two and a half quarters, but 
yeah, the Cardinals moved it up and down on them. So I'm not counting on this defense that they're just like locked down. It, it's a test, I believe, for them too. I'm taking the Ravens more just for stupid reasons. One, I, they they tend to be bad in the games where they're big favorites or th- where they have a big lead, but they show up for big games. This game is really important for them. They're one and two. It mean I think it means more to them, and and they're at home. And so I probably would pick the Bills if if they were at home. I just need a little more from. Justin Tucker. If you look at yeah, how about that? Not just that he's missing kicks. Actually, if you look at how when he missed the kick and the field position that they gave up, and how the other teams went and scored right afterwards, he was kind of the reason that Cowboys comeback started. If he hits that kick, they're up thirty-one six. Instead, it's great field position, and and the comeback starts. The week before, the exact same thing. He was about to put the game away. He missed it. The Raiders get great field position, comeback starts. And the week before, it was a, a huge missed yeah, kick against geez. the Chiefs. So, can you imagine? Let's go, Josh, Justin Tucker. Can we you need you. Being in the position of like, hey, Justin, it's just not happening. <laughs> well, no, you're not going to. And he's not missing like short kicks or anything crazy. But And he's pushing them all to the same side as well. Yeah, Coach Harbaugh said it was a mechanical issue, a technique uh, issue, hopefully. Because you were the one that pointed it out weeks ago. They keep going up against kickers where the other kicker's better. Brandon Aubrey, Tyler Bass is not in the Brandon Aubrey category. No, I, don't, no, I don't know if anybody is, no. but the kicking matchup, uh, I, I do think favors the Ravens here. The game, uh, you're going to have to see. I hope I, I hope so. I, I am really, really excited for this one. 